<sighs> you know if I'm bringing in the beer, we're just hanging out today. Greetings, good humans, and welcome to Tabletop Alchemy, where sometimes, sometimes we just hang out. And I just want to tell you about some cool shit that I've discovered in my, uh, I don't know, some things I ordered and some things I found online, a cool podcast I'm going to mention, and uh, cheers to all my patrons. Thank you guys very much. This beer apparently is on you, <laughs> and I thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Mmm. It's a good solid Mexican beer. So, if you can't tell, uh, I don't have a, a teleprompter today. I mean, I have a teleprompter, but I, there's nothing in front of it. There's nothing on the teleprompter. It's just a black mirror. I've kind of been collecting a couple of things throughout the last couple of weeks. I was like, oh, this might make a, a fun hangout video where I can just talk about some, some cool things that uh, I've found or have or received or whatever. Yes, I, I'm also kind of behind the gun on, on, on scheduling stuff and getting videos done and day job stuff done. So I do, I do have a, a, a checklist here that I put on my little, my little post-it note so I can refer to my notes about things I'd like to just chat about. These are all just fun things. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, man. I just, I wanted to get a beer out and just hang out. Not like I ever really know what I'm saying because that's why I have to write it down first. So, you know, we're making some, we're putting together wardrobe and stuff for this Rangers of Shadow Deep announcement teaser type thing, right? And even just that is like, you know, kind of working wardrobe stuff out for the film and whatever. But anyway, I was just looking for things to add to the wardrobe and bones came to mind because I think that would be pretty cool. And I was on Etsy. <laughs> surprise, surprise. But yeah, this is pretty cool, right? This is a, uh, a, a resin casting of like a real raven skull. And it is a pretty cool little thing that I want to like add to how oh, the audio is all weird but this is pretty cool I thought that it would be cool to like you know uh, uh, hang this like uh, actually what I really want to do for this um, if possible is like when we have one of the rangers is going to turn and look over her shoulder in the camera right and I thought this would be awesome to hang off of her shoulder like if if it's on her uh, if I could like mock this up correctly it's warm in here today guys I'm sorry and I have beer, so this is, you know, going to be one of those episodes. So if I had this, like, clipped or we mounted it to... Can I get in the frame? <laughs> Jeez. So, you know, she'll have a pauldron on, like a piece of armor, right? And uh, I thought this would be cool if this was, like, hanging off of it or whatever, like, in camera in a close-up shot. I thought this, thought this would be pretty rad. So we have a couple other, like, bone things. And uh, a buddy of mine who collects bones sent me a box of bones, so... I have a lot I have a lot of uh, skeletons in the closet right now. This could be a weird one, guys. This is Ignatius unscripted. <laughs> this is so dumb. I can't even put it back in the box. I've had two sips of beer. What else do I have? Where's my little list? I already lost my notes. <laughs> you see you see why? My videos are the way they are. I got a couple of books. Uh, one of them I ordered months ago, and I got the PDF right away, but the real book finally showed up like two weeks ago. And it's such a cool, it's such a cool printing, man. This is the expansion volume of Rangers of Shadowdeep content from Modiphius. It's just a cool book. It's nice. Look at that binding. Nice hardback. There's the uh, inspiration for the whole announcement teaser the whole thing, I wanted to recreate this shot, sort of. Inside, you find like uh, the DLCs, <laughs> I call them DLCs, the extra content that Joe releases, right, is published usually in pamphlet style, like they're smaller books, right, so they're, they're not hardbacks. But this book is collecting them and then they put the actual title page or the cover from each expansion part that's in here. So the main bulk of this book is actually there are now basically archetypes of soldier or companion types but you can also make them you can make your ranger you can choose one of these archetypes for your ranger and they're kind of based on geography within the world like like different like for for example there's the varakian rangers so or the varakian archers sorry which is what i'm writing the main character for the movie, she is a Varakian archer. 
Um, so in here are rules for Varakian archers, which you can take either as a companion or you can make your ranger be a Varakian archer. And they have like some extra, you know, some magic abilities that they, that all have to do with arrows and archery and stuff like that. But there's all kinds of different things in here. There's the river shark, river shark rogues are in here, which another character from the, the movie, uh, is, is going to be a river shark rogue, Gideon Grindel. Anyway, um, so there's cool things in here, knights and spellcasters and, conjurers and stuff like that and they're all based on geographical areas within the world of the rangers of shadow deep so it's pretty cool but yeah it's just such a nicely nicely published bound book it's very cool i dig it so this is the original uh modifius version which is the original rule book core rule book plus a couple of uh uh i keep wanting to say dlc downloadable content but a couple of, of expansions that's why i need a monitor down there and more beer so that I don't care about messing things up like this. Yeah, there we go. This is like show and tell, I guess. That's we're doing romper room show and tell today. Whatever. Anyway, they're super cool, but yeah, I like it. Super nice. I'm very, very stoked. And they look really good on the bookshelf, right? We all care about that. How do your books look on the bookshelf? Because let's be honest, most of us don't read books anymore. We just collect them to decorate our houses with. And then we go watch YouTube because that's what we That's what we do. In today's society what is next let me look at my let me look at my notes more beer is next <laughs> now this is super cool I, I i already offered massive private thank you for this but this is a public thank you for this because uh, one of my patrons so cool so they basically said hey i'm clearing out some of my library uh that they had to donate some books and they were going to donate i don't know a bunch of books but they had this one that they were so kind to ask me if I would want the book instead of it going to some deserving person in another land. When I found out what it was, I was like, are you, are you kidding? Yes, I want that book. And I totally offered to, to pay for shipping and stuff, but they wouldn't let me pay for shipping. So again, thank you very much. Now, this may not mean a lot to some of you, but this might be pretty cool to a few of you. Early on in my YouTube career, I did an an episode all about why I really, really enjoyed the, I guess it was a BBC series called Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. Now, Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell is a novel by Susanna Clarke, and I love the book. I talked about that in that video, which, snap, over there, I had to change hands to snap. But anyway, uh, I, I've only read the book as a PDF, uh, or as a, uh, uh, I buy my books through iBooks, you know, or Apple Books or whatever, uh, or Kindle. And uh, I've never had a physical copy of John's Strange and Mr. Norrell. But this is a first edition, first printing, which is the only printing, I believe, that is in the white cover with the black text. After this, everything was published with a black cover and white text. You know, it has the... I mean, it's a big book, and it's got the ribbon, you know, for your bookmark and all that stuff. When I do my next reread, I've, I've read the novel twice, um, and I'm going to read it again, because it's just awesome. I highly recommend it to anyone who hasn't heard of it or whatever, and I think this is lovely. I am just so, it's so cool. It's so cool. It's up on my shelf on display where I get to see it, and it's fantastic. I have a couple other things for wardrobe, for the Rangers teaser thing. So... For the female ranger, that's going to be one of the two rangers in the shot, right? Uh, which, I have a video coming out pretty soon. I, I have to edit it um, where we actually, uh, it, it actually features my wardrobe designer and she builds fabric. I, I don't want to get into it. It's such an amazing thing that what she does. We'll, we'll talk about all that later. <laughs> I'm just hoping that I'm, I'm giving myself enough to edit a video out of with that doesn't make me look too stupid or sideways with the extra beers I drank before I started. I'm just kidding. So like for Jared, now I'm talking like a robot, I'm super self-conscious. What is happening today? Obviously I have to, the, our rangers need armaments. Is that the right word? They need weapons. <laughs> so, you know, I got that one sword, we already showed that off. The sword we got for Jared uh, to carry in the shot. He's probably gonna have an extra sword hanging off his back, which I've got that in the back corner over there uh but so for laura who's playing our other ranger i was like well they're rangers one of them has to have a bow so i was searching etsy for bows and 
because I don't know, I, I was looking for cosplay bows, thinking they'd be cheaper. They either look stupid or they're just not any cheaper than like actual functional bows. Like, and they're all like, it was expensive. And some of those functional bows that are like modern, but they're made out of wood and they have the crazy carved grips. I mean, they look really cool. And I was like, I want to buy one of those. That would be awesome. But they're like $300, $400. So I was like, I can't, I can't justify buying one of those for, I just can't, right? Can't afford that. And then I came across this guy on Etsy who makes bows for LARP or whatever out of PVC. And they actually look really cool. So I got one. And uh, I'll, I'll put the link to his Etsy shop down in the, down the, down in the uh, comp, no, whatever, down in the doobly-doo, whatever it's called. But yeah, check this out. I mean, I can't really hold it all up in the shot. It's not strung. Now, I'll string it in a second. But this is PVC. And if you can tell, like, what he's done is he's, he's I guess, bought PVC pipe and then melted it or heated it up and then squished it, it seems like, into shape. Because this is all like one piece. And you could tell here there's a cut. I don't know if it's gonna focus on that. Probably not. If I hold it back here by my face, it'll focus. So this is cut and it's smashed together. So it's rounded on the other side. And, but then it has this cool like detail where it kind of goes, the, 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 the width kind of twists right into a flat thing here. And we have the grip, which he wraps in leather. You could do it custom designs for the leather wrap. And it's actually, it's just very cool. It's super lightweight. It's not super expensive. I mean, I think this was 60 bucks. And it's not something I could, I mean, yeah, I could go buy a couple PVC pipes for, you know, 12 bucks or whatever. But then I would have to figure out how to do all this and paint it. It's all painted with like a weird wood grain. Not weird, I just mean like, you know, he did a pretty good job of making it look like wood grain, and it's just cool. It is stringable and unstringable. I didn't want to store it strung. I was cautioned against that. And um, I think what I have to do is actually... I'm afraid it's gonna snap off into my face. But yeah, you could see, like, uh, I don't know how to show this, because it's too big. It's too big for the frame. Dang it. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Take my word for it. It's cool. So there, you can kind of see it like this, I guess. So yeah, and it's actually like functional. Like it will act, it, there's tension here and it'll bow back and you can actually fire arrows with it. Like he said, you could maybe nerf arrows or something, but you can shoot it. I don't know, I don't have any intention of shooting it, but you know, our ranger can hold it. She can hold it in one hand while she's got her wardrobe on. I can't really show this off. This is just dumb. I'm good at what I do. You in the back, shut it. Is it warm in here or is it just me? Now, she's gonna have that bow in her hand, but I could put it on her back if we wanted to, but I don't need to put it on her back because I got this. And this is super cool. I mean, this is a nice piece of leather craftsmanship. If I can hold it in frame. Uh, this is a, qu a quiver. So you can see there, it's, uh, or, yeah, and yeah, we can put our arrows in there. It's got a little wood on the bottom. If I like put it back here, it'll be in focus. A little wood in the bottom. It's all tied up. It smells like leather. It's uh, it's super cool. It's a good shape, right? It has, a, has a very cool like elven shape, sort of. I, I like this. I just, I, I really do like this curve right here and the flare and it's just awesome. And then of course it comes with all the straps. You know, I gotta get my S&M in there somehow. I love that stuff. I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, it's got the straps so this chunk goes on her on her on her chest and then it straps into the back right so it's very cool just add another layer <laughs> it'll just add another layer of straps and things to her wardrobe to her outfit which again you'll see when we do that video but yeah all in all this is super nice and i think this was like 135 dollars um which i know some of this stuff sounds expensive but there's nothing worse than when you see something in a movie that takes you out of the thing, when you're like, that just looks cheesy. So I'm trying to balance how much I spend with what looks good. And trust me, I looked at a lot of quivers. There's a lot of people making stuff like this for Renaissance Festival people and, and just, you know, people that want to dress up and everything. A lot of it's pricey, and I was just trying to find the coolest one that looked cool and also wasn't super over-the-top price. But this, and, and this buckles on really nice. It's all riveted. The rivets look good. They're not like too shiny. It's just a nice 
it's like well made and we will see it. You don't want to spend money on stuff you're not going to really see too much, right? If you're not going to see it too much, whatever, then it doesn't have to be. So why spend a bunch of money on it? When she turns and does the shot where she looks over her shoulder, we'll kind of see it here, but also we would see arrows. And so I ended up going again on Etsy and a lot of the arrows were there, but I got six of these arrows with black fletching, which I thought that's the, I really like the black fletching. And I like the, the, the wraps, the little thread linen wraps that go around and the way these are like tied. The only bummer about these is the, the knocks at the end are plastic. So I will probably have to, I don't know, rough them up a little bit, make them look like wood or something like that. We'll see. I got six of them for a hundred bucks. I won't put six in here, I don't think, but I'll have the option. So I thought that was a, an okay expenditure for that. And they'll look good, because that's another thing that you're gonna see when she turns and we, we have the shot where we're looking at her here, you know, we're gonna see the arrows sticking up in the frame, so. And also in the wide shot, in her profile, we'll see the arrows sticking up over her shoulder, um, because I will place them that way so that we do see them. So I wanted to go on to uh, lego.com. I wanted to buy these today for this video. I was like, oh dude, they got released for pre-order. Check it out. The Dungeons and Dragons Lego minifigure series has been released for pre-order. And so I was gonna buy 12. Um, I know that they're random packages, but I wanted to buy the six pack, the six pack box, because when you get a six pack box, you're guaranteed that at least they will be random, but they won't give you duplicates within the six pack box. Now, obviously I would need to order two boxes and I'm bound to get some duplicates within, between the two boxes. At the very least I wanted to order the first six, because then after that I could go online onto BrickLink and buy the other six that I'm missing, you know, instead of buying an all another box. But turns out that you cannot pre-order the six pack. You can only pre-order the singles. And I don't want to order 12, even six singles, because there is a chance of, much higher chance of getting duplicates that way. Because I think they are just randomly stuffed in a bag, pulled off a shelf. So I want to buy the box, the six pack box. So I can't order them for this video. I have to uh, I have to wait. Lego D&D, it's awesome. I understand there's a whole bunch of D&D controversy going on with the new thing and Watsy and whatever, but uh, Dungeons, and Dragons, Dungeons and Dragons is a thing you can play on your own. You don't need Watsy and all that other stuff. You can play whatever edition you want. Who cares? We just like Dungeons and Dragons, right? Or other role-playing games. So these figures would be great. They're just TTRPG figures. That's how we should look at them. But I think they're so cool, and they're also Lego. So, you know, I have to get them. What else do we have here? Oh, yeah, 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 okay. I grew up Catholic. <laughs> I wanna talk about Warhammer 40K. <laughs> That's right. I wanna talk about Catholicism in real life and Warhammer 40K, because I dare you to tell me that this right here does not look like something from 40K. I mean, does this or does this not look like some piece of art right out of some 40K lore book? And you might be wondering, well, yeah, even if it does look like 40K, what is this? What is this thing? Look what's inside this thing. Tell me that is not right out of a 40K book of some kind. That is apparently the skull of Mary Magdalene. Yes, that is apparently a skull that is just over 2,000 years old that they have saved, they being the Catholic Church, and uh, stuck it into this 40K-looking Ark of the Covenant gold uh, uh, carriage... I understand that the Catholics have these relics, right? I mean, this stuff is literally like just fantasy lore in person, right? I mean, this is like fantasy lore inspiration, right? They have relics, which are body parts of saints. Uh, and I just had no idea that supposedly Mary Magdalene's skull was preserved and saved all this time. I did not know that. And I just, I look at this and I'm just like, I mean, it is, it is insane on a number of levels. Wait, just stop, stop. It's just, yeah, it's insane on, on a, on a crazy creative level, <laughs> let's say. 
as far as like inspiration goes for different things. I mean, the fact that you have like relics that have magic power. I just, I don't know. I am fascinated by this. And they apparently take her skull out and parade it around town on, I guess, religious holidays or whatever. Um, I don't know the lore behind it as far as like, you know, beyond it being Mary Magdalene's skull. I just, I don't know. Hoffman and I saw these images and we were just like, we can't get over how 40K this looks. <laughs> Mary Magdalene's skull. This is just, ooh. Well, fairy tales come from somewhere, don't they? The fact that this poor woman's skull is still parading around city streets encased in bronze and gold is just straight up games workshop. <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about is, uh, I'm going to drop two links down below. One is for a podcast episode from a podcast that I find highly entertaining. It's called what went wrong. And it's all about movie production. It's all about big movies that you've heard of. Each episode is about a particular film. Some, some movies have multiple episodes, like Lord of the Rings has three episodes. The TV show Lost has two episodes. And the first episode is super interesting about how they put that show together. And my buddy Hoffman was like, hey, did you listen to that episode called Roar? And I was like, no. He's like, have you heard of this movie called Roar? And I was like, no. He's like, you need to listen to that episode right now. And so I did. Now, if you've heard of this movie, cheers. <laughs> This, this part is not for you. But if you haven't heard of this movie called Roar, with an exclamation point, if you haven't heard of this movie, I would almost suggest that you encounter it the same way that I did, which is listen to the podcast first, then go watch the trailer. And when I watched the trailer, I literally felt like I was experiencing the, Man the Mandela effect. You know, you guys know what the Mandela effect is, right? Where I can't explain the Mandela effect of this video. You can look that up, the Mandela effect. The core of that is like the idea is that some people think that maybe parallel realities are, are sort of crisscrossing and, you know, some people on the planet are, are moved into, are crossing into the, the very similar but slightly different parallel reality. We're all just shifting realities all the time. I don't know what I think about any of that, but in watching that trailer for the movie Roar, exclamation point. I actually felt like I was experiencing the Mandela effect, like in real time, because I could literally, I could not believe what I was seeing. And then knowing the history of the production, but that is one thing. But then when you see it, I was, I was, I was stunned. I was stunned. Now I'm probably overhyping it. It probably only affected me like this. And it's probably not going to affect any of you quite to the same level as it did for me. Because most of my friends that I sent the link out to, especially the ones who hadn't listened to the podcast, they just saw the trailer. They kind of just took it in stride. And they were like, yeah, this is like insane and nuts. But, you know, it's like, yeah, whatever, right? whatever. But I watched that trailer. I watched that trailer. I must have watched it 40 times. Just scrubbing through the trailer back and watching different cut different uh, scenes, clips over and over. And I could not get myself to believe. It's not that I didn't believe it because I'm looking at it. It's real. It's just everything together in my head. I was like, how is this possible? How could people come back to this set? Like employees who worked on this movie set. I don't even understand how you walk on this movie set and stay for a single day of work. I don't understand. I, I, my brain does not compute that. I know you, if you, if you don't know what the movie Roar is, you're, you're probably wondering like, well, what, what is it? But I don't know if I should just let you go find it and, and check it out. But I guess, I guess at the base level, this isn't really a spoiler or anything, but it's the fact that these people shot this movie in the late seventies, early eighties, I guess late seventies on an estate somewhere in the Hollywood area that had 130 lions. That's just one statistic. 130 untrained lions roaming the grounds. Now, if you walked onto a movie set and saw there were 100 lions, just wild lions, are you staying on that movie set for longer than it takes you to figure out Oh, that's a hundred lions and I have to walk. Nope. Nope. 
And the fact that they, these people made a movie, <laughs> movie is in quotes. It doesn't really equate. It's a movie length video. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the movie itself is movie length. It's not really a coherent like story, but if you listen to the podcast, you'll hear all about that. I still feel like I've crossed into a parallel reality. I, I've crossed into the, the neighboring parallel reality where over a hundred crew people would return every day to this pure insanity. I, I, I cannot get over it. I just can't get over it. That's why I had to talk to you guys about it. I just, I cannot get over it. I am thoroughly and 100% amazed. So check it out. Links below. So, in recapping, what have we talked about today? We've talked about Bird Skull and a patron who sent me a uh, book and a new Rangers of Shadow Deep book and a, uh, a quiver <laughs> and a bow <laughs> and arrows. Oh, and Lego minifigures and uh, Mary Magdalene's skull and uh, roar! Exclamation point. This video probably sucks, but it has beer in it. I hope I haven't wasted a half hour of your day. And uh, if I have, well, shame on you for not clicking off this video sooner. It's on you, man, not me. I'm not responsible for what you watch. Am I? And I hope you got some good hobbying done, which I've been doing some good hobbying. I could pan the camera over and show you what I've been working on, but I'm not gonna do that. Nope, those videos will be coming out pretty soon. Cheers, and uh, see ya. <laughs>